What is up guys? Today's video we are going to be going over how to do bandos. If you have never done bandos or are still learning how to do bandos well, then this video is for you. This guide will be going over how to solo, duo, and trio slash group bandos. Don't worry, if you have not done bandos before, it is actually a pretty easy boss to do. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to see more of my videos and also leave a like if you enjoyed and leave a suggestion for what you want to see next. Now, let's get started into the guide. Before we get too far into the guide, there are some requirements to do bandos. The completion of Death Plateau and the start of the Troll Stronghold to the point where you defeat Dad. You do need a rope to enter God Wars Dungeon if it is your first time, so do not forget that. You need 70 strength to be able to enter the Bando Stronghold, and you need at least 43 prayer to use protection prayers. I also highly recommend that you do the quest Edgar's Ruse so you unlock the ability to use the Trollheim Teleport, which I will go over more later, but basically this teleport is the best and quickest way to get to Bandos at the God Wars Dungeon. Now the main reason people do Bandos is for the drop table. Bandos drops the Bandos Chestplate, Bandos Tacit, Bandos Hilt, and the Bandos Pet. Those Bandos pieces are worth a lot of GP, and the Bandos pet, in my opinion, is one of the best looking pets, so you can see why people do Bandos. Also, Bando drops a lot of Alkables and random items that are worth decent money as well. Before we get into the exact details of Bandos, I think we should go over the stats that I recommend for doing Bandos. Now, if you're going to solo Bandos, I recommend that you have 90 plus defense, 90 plus attack and strength, and 70 plus prayer for piety. Now these are just recommendations and I've definitely seen people do bandos with lower stats, but just know without these stats, soloing is much harder. Now the best way in my opinion is to duo bandos or to trio bandos, especially if you have these stats. There are two rules at bandos and they are called the tank, the person who takes all the melee hits from bandos and typically has higher defense, and the attacker who normally has higher melee combat stats to kill bandos quicker. There is however a third rule that has become quite popular at bandos due to the toxic blowpipe having high DPS. It is called the ranger. However, I do not recommend using this rule unless you are trioing with another melee attacker. The stats for the tank I recommend are 90 plus defense, 80 plus attack and strength, and like the other rules, 70 plus prayer. Now, for the melee attacker, I recommend 80 plus defense, 85 plus attack and strength, as well as 70 plus prayer. And for the ranger, I suggest 70 plus defense and a minimum of 85 plus range and 70 prayer. Now these are just recommendations, but honestly, if you have higher stats, bandos is going to be much easier. Before we go over everything, you should know the combat styles for bandos. Bandos uses melee against the tank position player, and the tank should use melee as well and also prey melee. However, Bandos does sneak in random range hits, so the tank will randomly take heavy hits. Now for the attacker and ranger, Bandos uses range against them, so the attacker should prey range and use melee or range on Bandos. While attacking Bandos, there are also three minions, Steelwell, Grimspike, and Strongstack. These minions will attack you the whole Bandos fight, so it is possible to get comboed quite hard, so always pay attention as the tank. Steelwell uses magic and typically damages the most, Grimspike uses range and does hit pretty consistently, and Strongstack uses melee. The attacks you use on them are melee or range depending on your role you have chosen. You do not attack the minions until the end of the Bandos fight, but I will get into that later and show you guys examples with videos. But for now, the order of killing the minions after Bandos is dead is the Major, the Ranger, and then the Meleeer. Now there are three methods to doing Bandos and each have their own sets of benefits. When soloing bandos, you don't have to split the drops with anyone, so you do have the chance of making more money, and you have a greater chance of getting the pet yourself and not watching someone else get the pet. When doing bandos, you don't have to split with more than one person, so it's not too bad, and also you can get way more kills when doing compared to soloing, and your trips are much longer when you're duoing. When trioing, you get loads more kills, and also your trips are very long. Now that we know some basics about bandos, we will now go over the weapons you should use against bandos. Before I get into that, the tank, the attacker, and the ranger should all have the Bando's Godsword or Dragon Warhammer to lower Bando's defensive stats to make him easier to kill with the special attacks. I personally have used the Dragon Warhammer there, and it seems to hit considerably less than the BGS, so I always recommend the BGS. As the tank, you should always use the Abyssal Tentacle Whip or the regular Abyssal Whip if you really can't afford the Kraken piece. If you don't want to use the Whip, which I suggest you do, you can use the Samuraki and Hasta for extra defensive bonuses. As the attacker, you should use the Abyssal Tentacle Whip or the regular Whip. As the ranger, you should use the Blowpipe, and if you don't want to use that, then you can use the Armadillo Crossbow, but I do recommend using the Blowpipe. 
Now that we understand how bandos will be killed, we will go over how you will heal during the trips. Now obviously you will use food and or ceridomin brews, but when those start to run out, you will have to use other ways to heal. The most popular and effective way to heal is using guthans to heal on the minions at the end of the fight. Now if you are a ranger, a popular way to heal is using the toxic blowpipe special to heal, and additionally everyone should bring bones to peaches and use peaches to heal during the trips. Before I tell you guys how to get there and what to wear, I want to let you know a way to make trips longer and better. A good way to save spots and make trips longer is using pot sharing. Pot sharing is available if you have done the Lunar Isles quest and have the Lunar Spellbook. The two spells to use would be Boost Potion Share, which requires 84 magic and uses your super combat potions on everyone within a square away from you. The other spell is Stat Restore Pot Share, which requires 81 magic and uses super restore potions on people around you as well. The advantages of the spells are this. Let's say you are duoing, instead of each person drinking one sip of a potion, a pot share with the available runes and spellbook can use the spell to use only one sip on both people. So I highly recommend using it, but if you can't, don't worry about it, it's not a huge deal. Alright, now let's get into the gear and inventory setups for soloing and for duoing slash trioing. Let's start with the duoing and trioing setup. First off, whenever you do bandos, you need to have a Zamorak item and a bandos item on your character at all times. So if you can't afford Tacits and the Unholy Symbol, then use the cheapest Bandos and Zamorak pieces you can use that you think makes sense. Now for the gear, if you are going to duo or trio Bandos and you are the attacker role, you should use the Helm of Nata's Knot, use a Fire or Infernal Cape, use the Amulet of Torture, and if you can't afford that, use a Fury. Use an Unholy Symbol because it counts as a Zamorak item. Use the Tentacle Whip or a regular Whip. Use the Carol's Tops for when the Mage attacks you while you're attacking Bandos. And if you can't afford that, use a God Dehyde Top. Use the Dragon Defender, and if you don't have that, use a DFS or a Zamorak Book. Use Bandos Tacits for your Bandos item, or use a Varak Plate Skirt. I use a Region Bracelet, but you can substitute that for Barrow's Gloves or for a Combat Bracelet. Use Dragon Boots if you can't afford Primordial Boots. And then I use a Berserker Ring imbued, but you can use whatever ring you can afford. Now for the cheap Zamorak item and Bandom items that I recommend you use if you can't afford the other ones is the Bandos Boots and an Unholy Symbol, or use Bandos Boots and Zamorak Van Braces. For the inventory for the duo or trio attacker inventory, you should have your Guthans Armor Switch, the Bandos God Sword, 3 Ceridoman Brews for combo eating, 2 Super Combat Potions, 6 Super Restores, and 150 Bones to Peaches, House Teleports for an easy escape, a Rune Pouch with either Alks or Pot Sharing Runes, Manta Rays, and 2 Trollheim Teleports. The two teleports are used in a way to allow you to get an extra Mana Ray by teleporting to Trollheim, dropping a Mana Ray, then teleporting to your house and going to a bank, then grabbing another Manta Ray, then teleporting back to Trollheim and picking up your food you dropped. I will go over it later in video, but it's a good trick to use. Now for the tank gear and inventory. This gear and inventory is the same gear that you would use if you were just soloing, but it is also the tank gear for the duo or trio partner. Use a Serpentine Helm, and if you can't afford that or use one, then use a Guthans Helm or a Varax Helm. Use a Fire or Infernal Cape. An Amulet of Fury is actually better than the Amulet of Torture because of its defensive bonuses. An Unholy Symbol for a Zamorak piece. The Tentacle Whip. Carol's Top, the Dragonfire Shield, which can be upgraded to the Elijah Shield, Bandos Tacits, which can be downgraded to Varax Plate Skirt, Region Bracelet or Barrow's Gloves, Guardian Boots because of the defensive bonuses, but you can use Bandos Boots as well, and then the Ring of Suffering because of the defensive bonuses, or use a Berserker Ring if you can't afford the Suffering, or use a Ring of Life. Additionally, if you want to be super tanky, but take some more magic hits, you can use full Justicar or Justicure, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you can use that because it has a defensive boost when using the full set. For the inventory, you should have your Guthin healing set, Bando's God Sword, 2 Super Combat Potions, 6 Super Restores, 7 Brews is what I bring, 4 Manta Rays, 150 Bones to Peaches, 2 Trollheim Teleports, and House Teletabs. I did not include a Ranger setup on this guide because I do not use it or personally recommend it, but if you are going to range, use full Armadillo and a Blowpipe and use an inventory similar to the Attacker. Now I will go over how to get to the God Wars Dungeon. I will show you with videos soon, and I will also show you how to get to Bando specifically once inside, so don't worry about that. I'm not going to go into details on how to get there without the completion of Edgar's Ruse because I highly recommend being able to use Trollheim Teleport Tabs, but you can see that you have to run there using Climbing Boots if you do not have the teleport. Additionally, in order to make Trollheim teleports, you need to complete Edgar's Ruse and also do some Nightmare Zone to get a few points to buy some Scrolls of Redirection from Nightmare Zone to change House Teleport tabs into Trollheim Teleport tabs. The last thing I'll go over before showing you guys clips and how to do Bandos is how to enter the Bandos area. There are two options. You can either get a kill count of 40, which is what I recommend because you can kill low level goblins really quickly to get 40 kills. And don't worry, I will show you where the goblins are and how to do it. But the other way is getting ecumenical keys, which just skips over the kill count and lets you in automatically. 
I will leave a guide in the description on how to get the ecumenical keys, but it's pretty easy. It just takes a long time to get the keys, so I recommend using 40 kill count because it doesn't take more than 5 to 10 minutes depending on your level. Also, to open the first Bandos door, you need to have a hammer or a dragon warhammer. Now, do not bring a hammer in your inventory because when killing the goblins, they always drop a hammer, and if they don't in your 40 kills, which is very unlikely, you can keep killing them until you get one. When getting the hammer, you want to use a drop trick to be able to not lose any food in your inventory, but still use the hammer to open the door. I will show you guys with video later, and it's super simple. Okay, thank you for bearing with me, but I really wanted you guys to understand how to do bandos effectively. Now it is time to finally show you guys how to do bandos. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, but now it's time for video. Starting with the duo slash trio setup, keep in mind I will show you guys how to duo it, but for trioing, the only thing you add is another attacker or a ranger. And if you solo bandos, all you do is what the tank does, and I will show you how the tank works during the video, but soloing is just being a tank the whole time and not having an attacker helping you. Alright, I am now going to go there and show you guys what I've been talking about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the Trollheim teleport tab. You're going to go there, you're going to go ahead and drop a mana ray, teleport back to your house. Don't exit the portal. You need to go to your teleport if you have one in here, if you don't. Then just go ahead and go to the nearest bank. So then I'm going to go to Edgeville. And then you're going to go to your bank and you're going to go ahead and grab a manta ray to replace that other one. And then teleport back to Trollheim. And then go ahead and grab your manta ray. So once you're here, you're going to want to go ahead and run east and run down here. Make sure to set up your quick prayers. So for me, I am the attacker, so I'm going to set up mine to range and piety. You're going to want to run down here. Go across right here. And then you're going to go north. And you're going to want to pray range. Whoops, I just drank super combat. But you're going to want to pray range. And run up here. And go ahead and move this boulder. And then you are close to the God Wars dungeon. If this is your first time, make sure to bring a rope because the area that I'm going to go down, you cannot go down unless you've used a rope on it before. So this area takes away your stats, but you're just going to run over here. Keep going. And right here is where you'd use the rope on the hole. You can pray for melee because of these wolves. They're level 132 and they can hit you pretty high, but they shouldn't be too big of a deal. Now I'm going to show you where to get your kill count. You're going to go ahead and run up here. If you do not have an ecumenical key, you're going to want to run up here to this area. Someone's actually here, so I'm going to go ahead and hop worlds and then show you guys. So once you're here, you just kill the goblins. Someone else is here, but I'll just hop anyways. But you get the idea. There's going to be a goblin spawn here. There's about four of them that spawn here. And then this org you can kill as well. This guy's going to get upset, but I'll hop worlds. And then there's also another kill spot over here. If you do not feel like doing this. And notice how I didn't bring a hammer. It's because the goblins drop hammers very easily. And then by the time I get my kill count, I'll show you guys how to do the drop trick so you don't lose any food when picking up the hammer. And then another trick for getting kills without wasting your tentacle whip is just using your bandos god sword. See how there's already a hammer dropped? They just drop them like crazy. But So you need to get 40 kill count, and then you can go through this door. Okay, we now have 40 KC, and there's a hammer right here, so I'm going to show you guys what the hammer trick is. If you have a full inventory of food, this is how you do the hammer trick. You walk over, drop a piece of food by the door, go and pick up the hammer, run over here, open the door with your hammer and your 40 kill count, drop the manta ray, pick up the manta ray, open the door and drop the hammer and pick up the manta ray and then you are ready to go you're going to go ahead and run up here to the northeast this is where bandos is and this is the room as you can see people are already here so i will have to hop but once you and your duo partner or you and your trio partners are ready you go into here and you start the fight now that me and my good friend shout out to jrd have an empty world all you have to do is go ahead and drink a brew to brew up, especially if you're the tank, but we'll go over the tank afterwards. But now that I have my combat potion and my serodome brew, I should have drank a restore before that combat potion. My bad, go ahead and get ready. I'll go ahead and tell him to go, and the tank always goes in first, and then the attacker afterwards. So notice how he goes in, I wait for him to go in, he's going to attack Bandos. 
I'm going to drop a Manta Ray, put on my prayers, switch to my God Sword, and go ahead and use two specs on him. I'll just go through the whole kill and show you guys what you do. So you just keep attacking him. The tank is going to take most of the damage. And I will go over the tank mechanics after this kill, and I show you guys the mechanics for healing. So you just keep attacking him. As the attacker, honestly, you can AFK. You can play on another account at the same time. The attacker really has it way too easy. So being the tank is a, is a little bit difficult. So make sure you pay the, the tank. So when you heal, if you get the last hit, that is what's based off who attacks you. So if you did get the last hit, go ahead and switch to your Guthans if that's what you're going to heal with, which is what I recommend, especially for doing. Then switch to Magic because Steel Will hits the hardest, so you need to kill him first. So notice how I'm attacking him and I'm praying Magic. So you want to kill them as fast as possible, but you also want to heal. So I'm going to camp Guthans this whole time. And once I kill him, I will switch to the range. The Sergeant Grimspike. Now I'll switch to him. And then I will pray range. And a good way to pay the tank, just an FYI, normally what you do is you give the tank the Bando's Boots, if that is the drop, because they're working hard. So then I will want to heal. And I am all the way healed, so I'm actually going to switch to my God Sword and just smack him. And then there's one more thing. So there is a Bando's Altar over here, and you can use it when you're not being attacked. Nice punching. <laughs> I saw that. You can use it when you're not being attacked. And it recharges every 10 minutes. And I believe the more Bandos items you're wearing, the higher prayer it gives you. So, for example, I'm wearing two Bandos items, so it'll give me 72 prayer. So you quickly run over here. Charge your prayer. Get back to your spot. I will not have spec in time, so I will not be able to spec them. It's about to spawn. Then the tank will attack first. And you will stay on this western wall before the tank attacks. That way you do not get aggro. And that is how you do it. I will then show you guys how to do the tank mechanics. All right, now to show you guys the tank mechanics. Again, drink a brew, then drink a super restore. I messed up on the last one, and then drink a super combat. Have your prayers ready. Have melee and piety on. I'm going to go ahead, walk in, drop a manta ray so I can switch to my BGS and then attack Bandos. So you use both your specs, so don't worry about the mechanics yet. So you use both your specs, and then you're going to attack him twice. And then you're going to walk underneath him, like this. Make sure your run is off. Attack once. Attack twice, and walk underneath. Attack once. Attack twice, and walk underneath. Just like that. It's the same exact mechanics, or it's the same exact thing after you kill Bandos. You just switch to your Guthins. Pray Mage if you are getting attacked, and then pray Range, and then pray Melee. So the tank mechanics, the trick is you attack Bandos twice, two hits, and then you walk underneath him with your run energy off, and that makes it so he gets one attack to every two hits that you get. And that is why you want to do that. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this guide to be helpful. And if you did, go ahead and leave this video a like. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content. Also, doing bandos may not make you a media bank. But if you do it long enough, you will eventually get a good bandos piece drop and make loads of money. Otherwise, the bulk of your money comes from the herb and seed drops. And of course, the rune item alcohols. If you guys have any suggestions for another Ultimate Noobs Guide video or any other video, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll make sure to make it. We also have a clan chat that is a social and PVM clan, so if you're interested, go ahead and join. It is just my username, HeartBlitz, and the Discord for our clan is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for my next video.